Welcome back to Reading Java Code, Module 4, where we talk about program formats, uh, control statements. Uh, this is going to be kind of a long uh, module. I'm going to try to break it up into probably four, just to get it under a certain number of minutes per video. But anyway, one thing I want to talk about, when we talk about spacing, in Java, spacing and formatting is not a requirement. Uh, the key to Java and, and coding is that you just have to make sure that you have the proper uh, symbols in the right place. Uh, everything can be less, left justified, everything can be right justified, but you must understand that that code would be very, very difficult to maintain and read. Uh, you will find it out throughout your career that when you look at someone else's code and, and it's not formatted properly, it's harder to debug, it's harder to find errors, it's, it's harder to find what curly brace go or what curly brace and parentheses, all these things come into play. And we're going to talk more about those symbols later, but just want to talk about formatting is not a requirement in Java program. Uh, it will be um, a requirement wherever you work, there will be a syntax, there will be program structures, and things that you have to adhere to in coding uh, syntax and um, principles and concepts. So just be aware wherever you may work, you will come up against those kind of things. Secondly, like I said, this makes the code more readable and maintainable. Uh, I mentioned that it helps to helps in finding issues and errors. Uh, but what's interesting is this: whenever you hit the tab key in Java. I can't really speak for all IDEs, I can only speak for NetBeans. When you hit the tab key, it moves the cursor four spaces in, which I think creates a very, very nice format. I'm going to bring up the IDE real quick so you can see. This is four spaces in. So if I come down here and I come back to the beginning, I can start coding right here. I can say system out. Uh, as you can see, it automatically uh, justified itself because I hit the tab key to get it out. I can leave that just like this. I can bring this in. I can bring that in. I can bring it further in than that. Uh, let me put this back. Uh, so as you can see, formatting is not a real requirement. I'm going to run this and you'll see that it will run. As you can see, we didn't get no errors, so formatting is not really important in Java. But you did see the four spaces that it jumped in. Like I said, each IDE handles the spacing a little different, so I can attest to Eclipse or other Java development environments how they actually handle the tab key and those, and those uh, IDEs. So that's it for spacing. Uh, I will get back with you in one second. Okay, moving on to control statements. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is an if statement. This is called a logic statement or a conditional statement. And an if statement will always evaluate to true or false. Uh, nothing in between. Like, for instance, you can say if 12 is equal to 12, do what's right beneath it. If 12 is not equal to 12, which we know it is, or 12 equal to 13, which it isn't, it won't do the following uh, commands. So the if statement requires a opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. The statements between the curly braces will only execute once when the if statement evaluates the true and will then exit and pass control back to the next line of code. So what that means is this. Once the program encounters this if statement, it will run within those curly braces just one time. So for instance, let's say the program is sitting right here, it drops down to here, and it says if 12 is less than 14, do this. So therefore, it will print this and pass control to this next line and keep moving on down. Even if this was false, it would just skip over this and it would move on down. So true, it will do it. False, it won't do it. I will say you can use a 
explanation point mark, put it in front, and it will negate. So basically, if this is false, do this. But again, this is not the intent of this uh, series here. And again, the statements are typically indented for spaces inside curly, curly braces. So if you count back one, two, three, four, it holds true, it indents four, and it looks nicer. Okay, moving on to our next control statement, the while loop. The while loop is also a conditional statement, and it also evaluates to either true or false. So it's both a control statement, it's a loop, and a conditional statement. The while loop is very similar to an if statement, it requires an opening brace and a closing curly brace. Now, what's different from an if statement is this. A while statement is a loop, which means it will repeat itself until it finds its, its condition to be false. So what that means is the statements in between the curly braces will execute as long as the conditional statement evaluates the truth. Now, in this case, it's the same typical four indentations, but here's the danger with while loops or loops period. Well, let's say more so a while loop versus any other loop. This is while 12 is less than 14. Well, once we start this loop, we will be caught in what's known as an infinite loop because as long as every time it comes down, it goes here, it will print this, it'll hit this curly brace, and it'll come back to the top. 12 will always be less than 14, so it will run this again, it will drop down here, hit the curly brace, and go back to the top. It will do this over and over again. So you never want to actually create an infinite loop. So what you want to do, you want to have a variable, which, will, which I will show you later, to control this loop so at some point it can evaluate the false, and it will exit this and continue processing down. Okay? That's our while loop. Our next loop or control statement is a for loop. A for loop is a statement used to iterate or parse through something and has a conditional component that must evaluate the truth to continue its iteration. Okay? Now, iteration means to basically sequentially go down a string or go down in number to iterate. You can iterate up or down. The for statement is a combination, if you ask me, of the while and the if statement, and it requires also these curly braces. What's interesting about a for loop or for statement, it requires use of a variable to increment through. Different from a while loop or while statement, a for statement is considered a loop. Now, here's the thing. The statements between, which is similar to a while loop, will execute until the condition of conditional statement evaluates the false. Now, that's really no different than saying it will loop through as long as it's true. But in this case, it will at some point be false or the iteration will stop. So look at this here. Here is the, the control statement for for loop, for parentheses. In the close parentheses, you always got to have matching brackets on either side. Just like you got hit this here, you always have a curly brace here. Now, here is the initialization. We covered variables. This is an integer, and you want this to be an integer inside of a for loop. So integer i is equal to zero to start, and this here will increment i up until i is greater than 12. So basically, this condition says as long as i is less than 12 it will print this so basically what it says this will print until I reaches 13 so what will happen is the control of the program will drop down here it will initialize I it will say I is 0 at this point it will run here well first it will increment and then it will run it will drop to here and it will come back around I would now be 2 or 1 it's going to come down, it's going to do this 13 times. And once we get, this hits 12, it's going to come down, it's going to increment 13, it's going to come down, and we come back around, I will be 13, 
and control of the program will drop below here and keep going down. That's why it's called a control statement. It takes control for a period of time or for iteration, and once it's complete, it will return control to the following statement or back to the program. Okay? And again, it uses the same typical indentation for spaces in. Okay? Our last control statement is this. Well, it's not the last, but the last one we will cover here is a switch statement. A switch statement is a conditional statement and is used to run a particular line section of code. Now, that's a mouthful. What that means is, unlike an if statement, you would have to write multiple if else statements to achieve this here, where you could just simply say switch, and basically what it's saying, switch to this case, so it's going to evaluate this to this, so it will only run this piece of code here, and then it will break out and drop out of here. It will not evaluate waste time or runtime evaluating each one of these. Because once it meets a condition, we have a break, it'll jump out, it'll print this line, and jump out of here. Now, if this was not 13, this was 11, it would come to here. And if 13 was, this was 15, it would say, oh, that's not it either. It wouldn't print this, it wouldn't print this. It would print this by, by default. Let me say, this prints when neither is true. So this kind of tells us that this, these conditions were never met. You can put any kind of message here you want, but this is the default. When nothing matches, it will print this. Okay? I'm going to take a pause here, and we're going to come back and take our quiz. Thank you for listening to Module 4, Program Format, and Control Statements.